Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to do a jelly roll pattern that we did in the retreat video. I promised that I would come on and make a video for you guys. I did not do the pattern at retreat, but I am interested in doing it. But I wanted to get the charity quilts completed first before I went to other projects. So, I will point the camera down and we will get started. So I have a jelly roll here that I just unwrapped. It was fresh here out of the package. It said that it was $39.99. I thought that I had purchased this at Tuesday morning, but I'm not actually sure if it had the $39.99 price on it. But basically a jelly roll comes with 40 two and one half inch strips in the package and they're all rolled into this concoction here that they call a jelly roll. Also, when you pick a jelly roll, you want to pick a jelly roll that has multiples of the same fabric, at least two, because you're going to be using two of the same strips on the outside of your block. So it's kind of like a jelly roll rail fence quilt that we're about to make here. The lady that was presenting it at retreat did not have a name for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove my ribbon so that we can open this up so I have no idea where to start let's see we'll start at this yellow take it apart there and in this jelly roll I've got three uh, of some fabrics so it's not a whole lot of variety in the actual fabric prints which are okay but at least I have two of everything just about like these. I only have one. There are spots where I would have just one jelly roll. So I'm just going to put light jelly rolls. Like if I've got one of them, I'm going to put those in a stack. If I've got two of them, I'm going to put those in a stack. So up here I have jelly rolls that are single, right here are my doubles, and I just realized that I was out of the camera, so I just wanted to slide that down. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and slide this down a little bit more. Now up here I have all of my singles, and right here... I have all of the ones that are doubles. Now, I'm going to be making nine strip sets. And that means that I need nine pairs that are going to be double pairs. So in this particular jelly roll, let's count how many pairs I have. I actually have 14 of them that are pairs. So what I want to do is pull out nine pairs and I want to try to get everything that's like in various colorways. So I'm going to go ahead and just put up here if I'm skipping something. I like this one. And then we are going to go to this gray here. So that's three that are in pairs right here. This is four, like this black, that is five. Here is six and seven. 
eight. Slide this one over and this will be nine. So right here, I have just picked all nine of my pieces that are going to go on the outside of my Jelly Roll rail fence block. So I'm just going to turn these this way just to slide them over. Now, if I'm making nine strip sets, I also want to pick nine fabrics that can be single that I am actually going to cut the Jelly Roll strip in half. They can be pairs because they could be repeated. It doesn't really matter, but I just want to make sure that I get nine strips that I want to cut in half, and then I need another nine strips that I want to cut off one half inch. I want to make the strip two inches wide. So that's our next step. So these singles could either go in the middle or they can be the strip sets that I get that get chopped off. That gets chopped off a half inch so it doesn't matter from where I pull them so let's see I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve I have twelve strips here so what I want to do is pull out nine so let's see how many I've got here one two three four and this is five. So what I wanna do is go ahead and pull out my center pieces. I'm just gonna take one out of everything that's a double. That's two. Here's three. And four. And five. So now, these are some extras here. I'm going to have to pull one more out of there in order to make everything that I need. But right now, I have five here that I'm going to cut a half inch off. So five. And I want to mix up my coloring. So I want to get various pieces. So here is six. And seven. eight and nine so now I have nine pieces that I'm going to cut a half inch off from my two inch strips and now I need another nine over here that I'm going to cut in half they'll be one and one quarter inches when they're cut in half so here's two three four five, six, seven, here's eight, and then I'm just going to get one from over here for nine. And then what you'll have is we're using 36 strips and we'll have these four left over. So don't get rid of those because if we are going to add a border we can add a piece border uh using whatever is left over from our strip sets as we're piecing because we should have at least four inches left over from that and we'll get to that when we get into that portion of the quilt top so then what we have is nine pairs and these are 18 strips since we've got nine pairs and then here we've got nine singles that we're going to cut in half for one and one quarter and then we've got nine singles that we are going to cut into a two inch strip so so I'm going to start my cutting with the pieces that are the nine double sets we don't cut anything off of those strips so we're just going to move those over as well just to get them out of our cutting area this strip set here, these get cut into two inches. I'm just going to move them over and we're going to work with the strip sets that are going to be cut into one and one quarter inches. So now I have the camera right in front of my area. So it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for me to um, cut 
because I am going to be cutting at an angle you're not going to be able to see the entire strip set as well but I am going to stack three strips on top of each other making sure that my ends are together and I am placing my folds together and lining them up all the way down the strip set if you are uncomfortable cutting three strip sets at one time then please by all means go ahead and cut your strips individually you do not have to do it how I'm doing it and so now I'm going to put my one and a quarter line on the edge of the block and when you have these uh, jelly rolls or any pre-cuts that have the pinking on the edge your pinking the point of your pinking is the actual edge that you want your ruler on so I'm not really sure if this will show up on camera but I am actually putting the edge of my ruler where the edge of the pinking on the strip occurs and I'm going to go ahead and cut that in half just like that and then I've got two pieces here that I just cut in half okay so we're actually going to stack these and keep the like stacks together because we're going to be wanting to pull off the same fabric for the same block so for right now I'm keeping them into two separate stacks and then I'm going to go ahead and continue to do this with my next strips So now we're looking at my next set of nine strips and these are the ones that I actually want to cut into two inch strips. So you can do that in two different ways and I'll show you both of them. Again, I am going to stack my jelly roll pieces. And then put the third one on <laughs> all right so the first way that you could do this is you can just decide to line up your two inch mark on the outer edge of your pinking and just cut a half inch off so that's what I'm going to do here got that lined up cut off two inches this is waste you can save it and use it as a art quilt where you can use water soluble stabilizer I've shown you that using threads in a previous video or you can um, use them as ties I like to keep quilting strips like that for ties I'm going to be using these as ties now the second way that you can do this is to stack your pieces so I'm still stacking three jelly roll strips on top of each other this is my third one and instead of cutting off the half inch you could cut say like approximately a quarter inch or less from one side 
flip it over and then cut a quarter cut the strip to two inches on the other side so that means you will not have any strip that you can save like this you'll have all trash so now that I've turned it over I'm gonna go ahead and line up my two inch line on the edge and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut that so then that way you're actually getting rid of all the pinking that's on the side of your strip set and now I'm going to go ahead and do this final set So, and now we have done our cutting for right now and I am going to bring back in my strips and I am going to lay them this way so that you can see the actual cut strips as I'm going to be piecing them. I'm actually am going to piece these strips like so. And then these are my doubles. And when we piece the doubles, we'll have doubles on both sides. So I need to separate these strips out. Just a second. So these will be on one side. And then these other in the same orientation will be on the opposite end. Now, one thing that I am going to do is I am going to go through my sets and I am going to match up what I want to sew next to each other. Like, I don't like this light being in the middle with these. I'm okay with the yellows on the outside, but this is just too much light in the middle so I would probably come back in here and put this one on the bottom and probably put something else in the middle there. So I am actually going to sort out all nine of my strip sets and then I will come back and show you just one of them. Okay, I have arranged all of my nine sets together. I have them all folded into each other so I know what set goes to what set. And I have four extra strips that we have not used yet. And this is my ninth one laid out. So this is very simple sewing. We are going to be piecing these long strip sets into one block and you can just press your seams all in one direction now it is february 19th and it is let's see what time it is about 10 47 so it's going to take a little while to sew this together so i'm not sure if i'm gonna sew all night or if i'm gonna come back to you in the morning So we have our two and a half inch strip and I am going to sew on a one and a quarter inch strip from edge to edge on the long side.
Okay, so I also have the opposite strip that I also want to sew. The one and a quarter inch piece too. So I'm going to do that as well. I'm doing the exact same thing as the other strip. Okay, here is my first strip that I had. And I am basically just going to use a wooden iron to press my seam instead of going to the ironing surface so I just got that out of my storage place and I'm just going to press this strip over and then I will press the entire strip set when I get to my ironing surface but for right now I'm just going to use my wooden iron so I can go on to the next step And I'm only doing this up on my machine so that you can see. I would normally use my round rotating Brooklyn Revolver cutting mat that's down below me. But then you wouldn't be able to see. So that's why I'm doing it up here. I'm just folding the seam over and then I'm using the wooden iron to just keep that seam in place. Keep it open. It's kind of giving the seam some memory. So when I even go to the my press station half my work's already done so this is what I have right now and now I want to put that two inch strip in the middle and this is my two inch strip so it's going to go in the middle so I'm just going to put it edge to edge and sew down the entire strip set again Okay, I just chain piece on something so that I can get my strip off. So now this is my strip and I am going to do the exact same thing. I am going to use my wooden iron and I am going to press this entire seam over as well. And you have seen me do that in this video as well as previous videos. So I am going to actually skip this step and I'll be back. I'm actually going to press it on this strip set as well. So I'll be back. All right, I'm back and I have my two pieces where I have used my wooden iron to just press the seams open so that I can sew these together. So I have a three set here and then I have a set that has just two pieces. So now I want to sew this short end to the other side of this two inch end right here. So this is the same piece here that I wanna put over on this side with this fabric being on the outside. And it will look like this. So that's just gonna be me flipping that over. And again, sewing the long seam. So we're actually making a strata that we're going to end up cross cutting. I 
have my strip done and again I'm going to just use my wooden iron to press all my seams I actually have been pressing my seams all in one direction on this particular quilt it does not matter how you press your seams because none of your seams are going to match up in the actual block so you can press however you like after I get through using this wooden iron I am going to go to my pressing station I will press this I may put just a little sizing in it as well so you can pick your spray starch spray sizing of choice and then I will meet you back at my cutting table where we're going to measure our strata and then we're going to trim it I just wanted to come back and show you my nine sets I'm actually going to stop sewing for the day it's actually 1 a.m. now so this took me about two hours and 20 minutes to sew and do the intro any explanation so therefore I assume that you can do this in two hours or less and I have my nine strip sets here just wanted to show you and my goal was trying to mix my lights and darks so that's three this is four five six seven and eight and then here is nine so I will stop working here for tonight because I do have to get up to take my nephew to school in the morning so I'm just gonna go ahead and stop here and then I will see you tomorrow where we will go to the next step in this video it will be in a next <laughs> second though bye everybody so it's the next day, February 20th. It is 8.13 a.m. And now I am going to cut my strip sets into blocks. I have measured my strip sets and the mathematic correct width of your sets should be seven and one half inches. If yours are different when you measure your strip sets, you want to measure it and then use that measurement to cut your pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross cut these into seven and a half inch segments. And I am going to make sure that none of my salvage is in my block. So I'm making sure that on all fabrics that I am beyond the salvage. And then I am just going to lay this out. On a line on my mat look like I've got a little curve in my block here next one I want to lay on top but I'm going to offset my seams so that I don't have a lot of seam allowances overlapping so I'm just putting the edge of one two and a half inch strip on the seam line of another and this is my last one to put up and it looks like I did not raise them up enough to see the lines on my mat at the bottom here so I'm going to slide this all up one line on my board right there and now I am just going to cross cut this into two and a half I mean seven and a half inch segments I'm sorry and if you're uncomfortable cutting this way, you can most definitely cut them one at a time. Just remember that when you're layering up like this and you make one mistake, it's multiplied times how many stacks you have. So you have to be really careful. So check your measurements twice. So I just cut at seven and a half, then I cut at 15, 
and now I'm going to cut at 22 and one half. And then I'm just going to stack these up. These are now square blocks. So I just cut three off of this strip set. So I have nine strip sets here, and if I cut all nine strip sets into five blocks each, I'll end up with 45 blocks, but I only need 42 blocks. So what I'm going to do on this strip set here, I'm only going to cut four, so I've already cut three. So I'm going to cut this last set of blocks into four. So this would be my fourth set here. And then on my remaining strips, I cut the rest of my strip set into two inch widths. I got two of these out of the strip set. So if you've got enough to cut yours two and a half, or if you want a wider border, you'll just have, you'll have to figure out something else because I don't think you'll have enough fabric. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the rest of this into two inch strip sets. And also, I am going to go and piece these four remaining strips. I'm going to piece them into a strip set. And then I'm also going to cut it into two inch segments. And this is actually going to be a border later on. I'm going to add on the quilt. So that's where I'm at. I'll go ahead and cut this into two inch strips. So I stopped at seven and a half. So my next cut will be at nine and a half. Eleven and a half. Thirteen and a half. So remember, I'm getting more cuts on this one because I only cut four blocks instead of five. Next one is 15 and a half. And 17 and a half. And again, if your strip sets are a little bit longer, you may be able to cut yours into two and a half but I didn't have enough room to do that so I had to do what I could to utilize all of my fabric and again when I come back at some point this will already have been sewn together these last four strips that we didn't use in our jelly roll of 40 and then they will be cross cut into two inch strips to measure the same size that I have and this should be enough to go around my entire quilt and if not We'll make some plans for adjustments at that time if need be. But that's the plan, and we're going to go for it. So, I will meet you at my design wall. Hi guys, I'm back, and I have my quilt blocks on my design wall in the order that I want to sew them in. It was a little difficult for me to arrange them. I had to play with them for a bit, so that I wouldn't have light blocks next to each other, like either top or bottom or left or right or diagonally so I'm hoping that I'm successful with that <laughs> and I don't see something as I'm sewing but that was my goal was not to have any of the fabrics touching in any manner so from here I am just going to go ahead and sew these into rows and then once I have them sewn into rows I will sew those rows together into a quilt top so I definitely will not be showing you that because my work area is pretty small but I just thought that I would share with you what I have here so I will see you in the next clip with my completed quilt top 
All right, I am back pretty quick. I have <laughs> just taken two rows of my blocks off the wall, but I realized that I forgot to tell you that your blocks are alternating where your seams are going up and down and then sideways on the next block so that it alternates kind of like a rail fence pattern. And this way, you don't have to worry about any seams matching. That's why it didn't matter which way you press your seams. So I will continue to do this and I'll come back later. All right, guys, I'm back and I have my quilt top pieced and I am auditioning border fabrics. I have gone through and peeled out these black fabrics here and that stripe. They both have yellowish gold accents which are in my fabric. And then I also pull this yellow fabric there and I put it up against my strip sets to see what it would look like. And I'm almost thinking that I am going to use all four, these three darker ones right here and that one right there. I'm going to see if I've got enough yardage that I can just cut strips for the inside and the outside. <laughs> In black, I don't know if I'm liking the yellow the yellow kinds of kind of does space it though, but I like the pop of the black better. So maybe I will just put black on the inside and the outside. So I'm going to put three borders on this quilt. My first border is going to be cut five and a half inches. Then my second border, the width is two inches cut, which is going to be 1.5 finish. And then my last border is going to be cut six and a half inches. Um, and I don't know what the measurements of this quilt is. I'm just making it as I go. So, let's see. I am going to cut the scrap fabrics into five and a half inch strips. And then we'll start from there. Hi guys, I am back and I have sewn a five and a half inch strip to each side. And a five and a half strip to top and bottom. And I actually used two different fabrics to do that since I had enough. I originally thought about mixing the fabrics, but decided to just go ahead and do it this way instead. Um, again, I added a five and a half inch strip, which makes my border five inches finished. So I am now going to add my piece border. Right here I have my pieces. I actually sewed those four remaining jelly roll strips together and then I cross cut them into two inch strips the same width as my other pieces that I had left. So now I'm going to piece these strips together in hopes that I can have enough to go around the entire quilt. So I'll be back in a minute. All right guys, I am actually outside on my deck and my design wall is now too small for this quilt. This quilt is now 64 and a half inches wide by 74. No, it's 67 and one half inches wide by 74 and one half inches long. And I went ahead and put the last two borders on here. I talked about that piece border and I also added another border. And as you can see, I used those four black background fabrics I used uh, two fabrics in each of the borders and I'm really happy with it and I'm looking forward to showing it tonight at the quilt guild meeting it is now 5 p.m. <laughs> and so you can do this quilt in a day this is really and truly a quilt that you could do in a day thank you all so much for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.